There we go. Hope I'm sitting in a spot you can see me. It is March 7th, which means nothing really in particular, but it does mean I'm going to talk about books. Because <laughs> it's a day. Any day of the week. I'll talk about books all the days. Basically, I haven't even introduced myself yet. My name's Lily. I talk about books occasionally. We're already a week into March, but I want to talk about the things that I'm planning to read in March. This last week I feel like I've been in a bit of a slump. Um, so yeah, maybe I'll talk about that for a minute. Maybe I won't. This is my stack of books, minus a couple that I'm getting as ebooks from the library or audiobooks from the library. These are the physical books that I have for this month. Um, I generally read six to eight books a month. So I don't plan on actually getting through all of these and I'm very much a mood reader. So while I might read this number of books, the actual books might be completely different depending on what I'm feeling later on. So with that in mind, I'll talk about the books that right now I'm planning on reading this month and a little bit about them, a little bit about why I'm reading them or uh, when I pick them up. That sort of thing. I've actually already read two books this month, which now I'm thinking back to like, oh, I'm in a slump, but like one of the books I've been reading over the course of a couple months and the other one is an audiobook I listen to in a day. I'm having, I guess I talk about this too. I feel like recently I've had a hard time like sitting down and reading a book, like a physical book or an ebook. Like audiobooks have been great recently for me. Because I always feel like whenever I'm sitting down, I'm like, well, I want to be working on something else. So like recently, I've been working on a quilt with my family, or I knit a lot, or draw or paint or whatever. And every time I sit down, that's what I want to be doing. And But I also want to be reading. Like I can't do them both at the same time. So audiobooks are brilliant for that because then I am reading and I'm also getting to do the thing I want to do. Not that I don't want to read, but like you know, I can do something with my hands and have the story through another format. Anyways, now I will talk about the books I want to read. So the first one is one I'm in the middle of, and that is The Last Wish by, I don't know how to say his first name. I think I've heard people say it, Andrew. Sapkowski, I believe is how you say that. I read The Blood of Elves back in January and realized it wasn't actually the first book in the series, which I didn't understand because the back of the book... Okay, I'll explain it again. You know how you go into a bookstore and they have like themed tables sometimes? I think this one was like a movie to screen one or like fantasy that's been turned into movies or something like that. Anyways, the only one they had on the table for the series was The Blood of Elves, and so I assumed it says The Witcher book one on the back, it's the only one they have on this table, it must be the first book you're supposed to read, right? Incorrect. <laughs> there are two books of short stories first. Um, I think they're both short stories that you're supposed to read before you read Blood of Elves, which like explains a lot because it just kind of throws you in a lot of elves with like no background knowledge and doesn't give you any background knowledge either. So don't make the mistake I did. Read read The Last Wish and whatever the next one is next. Uh, the series follows a dude named Geralt and he is a witcher and witchers in this world are children. They're not children, but like taken as children. Um, they are fed certain like things and trained in a certain way to basically make them kind of superhuman. Taught a little bit of magic is what it sounds like. <laughs> um, and basically they can just, they're stronger, they can withstand more, they have mental and physical training, and they hunt monsters. Yeah, that's the guy we're following. <laughs> I hope in this story we meet Siri because the part that I'm most invested in is the relationship between Siri and Geralt, that sort of father-daughter sort of-ish relationship that I, you kind of get a glimpse into in Blood of Elves. Short stories don't really do it for me, so 
I started this one at the beginning of the month and it's seven days in and I think I've only read 70 pages or so. Let me see, where am I? I'm on page 80, I think. So I'm about this far in, which isn't bad. I just am having a hard time getting through it. Not because the book is bad, but partly I feel like I'm just in a slump and anyways. I have started that one. I've enjoyed the stories I've read in it so far. Part of why I have a hard time with short story collections is because it doesn't feel like there's an overarching plot, which there may eventually end up in this one. It's harder to feel like the next one is important to read, <laughs> which sounds so stupid because I do actually care about this character. These books are slow. Um, they're not very fast paced. And so if that's something you enjoy, this one might not be your thing. Um, but I've enjoyed them so far. I am reading them slowly though. So the next one I don't have a physical copy of. It is called There's No Such Thing as an Easy Job by Kikuko Samora. Yes, this is the book club book for Books Unbound, which I'm super excited to read. I've never read one of the books with them, like along with them. The stories that like I knew the stories of I've listened through the podcast of and really enjoyed listening to the discussions about them. They read Emma a bit ago, and so I listened in on that one. I'm excited to be able to read this one with them. This is a book that's been on my TBR for a super, super long time, but I've never actually read, and I actually don't know much about it. There are a couple of books on here that I don't know a lot about, and I'm trying to sort of keep that way. I don't really want to know a lot before going into reading it. This is one of them. I've heard that this one is similar to like Murakami's storytelling style, or, or like stories in general, but without the misogyny. I haven't read any of Murakami's work, so I don't know if any of that is true. I also haven't read There's No Such Thing as an Easy Job, so that's just what I've heard about it. I don't know if that's true. I am a little nervous to read this one. Like, I'm excited, but also nervous because the way Goodreads has it described as it's like a mix between convenience store woman and my year of re rest and relaxation. I haven't read my year of rest and relaxation, but I have read convenience store woman. I read it back in January and I didn't like it. And so I'm kind of nervous about that. I'm hoping for good things, trying to keep an open mind about it, uh, but that does make me nervous about it. It sounds like it's about a woman who were whose job it is, is to watch like security feed and make sure no one's stealing anything at the store. That's like literally all I know about it. Just hoping for good things about it. Trying to keep an open mind about it. Really hoping it's not like convenience store woman because I didn't like that one. <laughs> the next book I do have and that is Under the Whispering Door by TJ Klune. Yeah. This is the same author that wrote uh, The House in the Cerulean Sea which I read last year twice. I really really liked it. And I'm hoping for a similar writing style. I'm hoping for a similar storytelling deal. I picked this book up at the end of last year and just haven't read it yet. And so I'm finally getting into it. I'm really excited to read it this month. This is another book. I just don't know that much of what it's about. I bought it because I loved The House in the Cerulean Sea so much. But it sounds like there's a ghost in this story. The ghost is a person who feels like they didn't really live their life to the fullest when they were alive and so it sounds like it's this ghost and this other person who are sort of helping each other like live even though the ghost is dead. I don't really know a whole ton about it um, but I am excited to read it. This cover <laughs> and the cover of the house in the cerulean sea feel really similar to me and I love their covers. So that's that one. This is one that I just finished last night actually so i'll show you this guy and that is cytonic by brendan sanderson i've been reading this one with my family over the last couple of months so it's been a while coming but we finished it last night i'm gonna keep my thoughts on this specific book to myself until my reading wrap-up book video whatever the heck it's called Brandon Sanderson is one of my favorite authors. I really love the way that he writes. I really love his storytelling style. And I read this series all the way through with my family. It's been so much fun. His books are just fun to have read out loud, but also to read out loud. Like, there's no bad way to read these books. 
This is a young adult sci-fi series. It follows a girl named Spensa. She comes from this really aggressive society and her planet is under attack by aliens. They're trying to get off the planet eventually, I think, if I'm remembering the first book well enough. I think that's like the goal. It's a super, super fun read. It has serious moments and like really lovely themes throughout the books. The characters are just so much fun to watch interact with each other and um, yes, really, 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 really like that series. So I'm really excited to read the novellas next. Um, but that probably won't be this month. We'll see. The next one is another Brandon Sanderson book. And this one is a reread for me, if you couldn't tell by how beat up my copy of this book is. It is Mistborn, and this one's actually signed <laughs> by the author and also by the illustrator who does the maps. So that's kind of cool. This book is so old. Um, <laughs> I haven't read that book in a really long time. Uh, probably I since high school, so it's been a couple of years. It is one of my favorite books ever. Period. Full stop. Like, I love that book. I adore that book. There's nothing bad about that book. It doesn't do a single thing wrong. <laughs> my sister and I do this thing where, like, if we think a book is good, oh my gosh, this is gonna sound terrible, <laughs> but, like, we compare the tropes to how the tropes are done in this book, and, like, do they compare? And usually they can't compare because this book is so good. <laughs> but yeah, the next book in the world that this is in, uh, like the next Wax and Wayne book, is coming out this year. And so I really want to reread them all before that book comes out. It has every trip that I love. It doesn't skip on, skimp on the ballroom scenes. It has great characters who are flawed, but like they're perfect. I love them. But yeah, basically in this world there is this evil emperor who has lived for thousands of years and um, all the power, all the magic in the world sort of stems from him. Um, and so these are people who aren't supposed to exist because they're like the essentially the peasants, but they have this magic um, and that's sort of illegal. For them, <laughs> they really are not supposed to exist. The emperor really is all powerful. So imagine you're reading a story where the villain is like God. How would you defeat him? How could you possibly even like imagine yourself trying to defeat him? Um, but yeah, this, this book's a big heist book. I love heists. They're so much fun to read. The characters again, like are one of the shining parts of this book. They're done so well. And I just love this book. So I'm so excited to reread it. It has been such a long time. <laughs> My copy is so falling apart. Um, I brought this all the time in high school and read it like over and over again because I adore this book. I'm so excited to see if it holds up to what I remember, but pretty sure it will because Brandon Sanderson is still one of my favorite authors and I still love everything he's writing. So. There it is. <laughs> okay, this next one is my nonfiction for the month. Can you see my hair slowly fall out of its bun? And that is If Only You Could Talk by James Harriet. And this is sort of a memoir, if I remember correctly. I really hope this isn't like fiction and I'm just telling this wrong, but I think it is. Um, a memoir about a veterinarian in the 30s. And it's about just all the weird things that happened to him as a vet in the countryside. Uh, going to people's farms and like helping them out. He has like a whole series of these stories. It's like this one, it shouldn't happen to a vet. All creatures great and small. Um, there's another one in there somewhere, I can't remember. I've been hearing like some of these stories uh, that are in these books my whole life. They're so funny. They're so ridiculous and strange. <laughs> I'm just really excited to read this one. I think it's gonna be great. And it's a short one, which is good because we have a chunky boy coming up and I'm trying to keep some of my other books sort of shorter so that I don't feel so intimidated by this longer one that is coming up, but not yet. My next one is my classic for the month and that is Around the World in 80 Days by Jules Verne. So I'm almost done watching the show that's come out. It has David Tennant in it. I think it just 
wrapped up over the last couple weeks. I have two episodes left to watch. I've really, really enjoyed it. It's been so much fun to watch. I'm super invested in it. I had picked up the book like probably a month before I started watching the show and so that was kind of perfect timing. This um, follows a guy named Phileas Fogg, I believe, in 1875. And he, we're trying again. <laughs> uh, my camera cuts off every single time at about 20 minutes in. So we reached the 20 minute mark. I gotta cut it down. <laughs> I think the last book I was talking about on there was Around the World in 80 Days. I don't know if I finished talking about it. I hope that I did because I don't know if I'm gonna talk about it anymore. Basically, all I'll say about it, I'm hoping it caught it all, <laughs> but it might not have, is that I hope it keeps the energy that the show has got because the show has been so much fun to watch and I hope that the book feels similar because I'm really, really enjoying the show. Anyways, it's on PBS if you want to watch it. The next one we got is The Umbrella Academy by Gerard Way. This is one of my little sister's favorite comic book series. But yeah, I love Gerard Way. I love my Kim. Um, I really enjoy that and I really enjoy the art style of these books so I'm really excited to get into them. I watched the show when it was coming out the first season. I never watched the second season because I got to the end and was like I just have to watch, I have to read these books before I watch any more of them because I'm, I just was loving it. So I hope the comics are great. I have incredible faith in this man. <laughs> so and I trust my little sister's taste in comics, so I'm pretty sure they're gonna be good. If you don't know the story, basically in this world, which I think is Earth, right? It's been a long time. I honestly don't remember much of the story. <laughs> the premise of it is there is a day where a bunch of women, like a lot of women who aren't pregnant, give birth. And there's this man who's decided he's gonna go, he's going to buy or adopt or like you know, whatever, to get these kids, as many of them as he can. And each of them have strange powers, and he raises them essentially as a team of superheroes. That's about all I remember um, from the show. I can't remember what goes wrong, what they have to solve, what the problem is. I genuinely don't remember anything past they're born and have weird powers. Yes, that's all I know about it. Uh, but yeah, I'm excited to read it. I hope it's going to be good. I have high hopes for this one. The next one is a middle grade book. And I first heard about it in a wrap up video. And I'm blinking on her name, but she's like one of the most iconic booktubers. Everybody knows her. But that is The Trials of Morgan Crow. And it is by Jessica Townsend. I've talked about it a little bit in this video. I've been in a reading slump, like nothing sounds good to read. Like I'm excited to get to these, but I have this feeling that I'm not going to. It's, anyways. What I found is that middle grade books, like middle grade fantasy specifically, is perfect for me to get me out of a slump. So I'm excited for this one. I have put it on hold in my library. I'm hoping that it will uh, get to me within the month, but might not be. I've heard it feels like the beginning of it feels similar to Harry Potter. I don't know almost anything about it other than when she was describing it, it sounded like a ton of fun. And so um, that should be coming in this month. I hope that I get around to that one. The next one's also a middle grade fantasy. I actually read already this month. So I will again tell you all about that in my reading wrap up video. Um, but that is Amari and the Knight Brothers by B.B. Alston. This is about a girl named Amari and she's just finished up uh, school. It's summer. She got into a fight with someone at school who was bullying her and push it, pushed her. And so she loses her scholarship to this like fancy pants school. And so she is on summer break. She's totally grounded. Her brother has gone missing and so she's feeling really stuck and she finds or is given this briefcase from her brother that uh, basically lets her go to this summer camp where she learns about 
lots of supernatural stuff. Everyone at this camp chooses like a supernatural career and she's determined to become a supernatural like detective so she can find her brother. There are a lot of people against her going like trying to keep her back at this camp. She has also got like great friends who are you know encouraging her on as she's learning and her powers are growing but yeah she basically has to beat the people who are against her beat her own like self-doubt to get through the series of trials that will let her become a detective and find her brother it was fun i will not say anything more about it until <laughs> my wrap up but anyways my last book is another book I don't know a lot about, and I'm trying to keep it that way because I feel like it will be better if I don't know anything about it going into it, which is why I'm reading it now instead of later along the line. Even though I've had this book for months, it's been one of those books that's like, I know it's gonna be good, but it's long, and so I'm kind of afraid to start it. But it's getting a TV series and it's coming out this month, which means I have to read this book so I don't get any spoilers. That is Pachinko by Min Jin Lee. I don't know much about this book. I know it's about a family. It spans multiple generations, but I genuinely don't know literally anything else about it. I'm trying to keep it that way. I'm so excited to read it. I really feel like I'm going to love it. I have really high hopes for it. I think it's going to be so sad. Kind of get that energy <laughs> from it and from the way people talk about it. I feel like it'll be really sad, but uh, ultimately I hope that I love it. So that's my list of books. Um, I think we got everything. Let me show them to you again. Here they are. Um, I don't know if I'll get to all these. I don't know if I'll end up reading them all or if I'll switch to different ones, but that's my list right now. So I'd love to hear what you guys are reading. I'd love to hear what you're planning on reading. If you saw my list and like have another suggestion, one that you think I'm going to love, I'd love to hear it. And um, yeah, thanks for coming. Thanks for watching. And I'm hoping to get out another video this month, at least another two. But it doesn't always happen. So <laughs> that is all. Thank you all for coming and watching. And I hope you have a lovely month of reading or not reading and just that you have a lovely month. So. That's all. Bye. <laughs>